You ever feel yourself just being bitter? If you feel yourself being bitter, or you've ever felt yourself being bitter, this video is for you. Recently, I had an experience that I didn't enjoy. I, I was met with the realization that not everybody likes my creations. I know that when it comes to everybody, but in the art world, you feel like other artists are supposed to understand. And then when you realize that they have the same biases and the same prejudice as other people, you get discouraged. And that's where I was at. But when I was down and out, I came up with a way to find a way to get out of that thought process. And the way for me to get out of that thought process is to do um, is to do the work inside myself and look at where I, I where I have been and where I'm headed. So when looking at where I've been and where I'm headed, I had to realize that wow, I have a lot to be proud of when it comes to my creations. Uh, that being said, the purpose of this video is to show you all the things that I have sold this year. Uh, I sold more art during the pandemic than I have ever sold. Uh, I sold more art in the past 12 months than I ever have. And I know I've said this in a couple other videos, but I've never shown you the art that I've sold. So first, I'll start with this clock. This clock next to me right now is a red and black liquor cabinet grandfather clock. One of my favorite pieces. It's super spooky. If you turn the, if, when you turn the light on, the room turns red. Um, the store that I have it at, which is the Gallery Seventeen Hundred in Bolingbrook, the store that I had it at, I had it priced at a certain point. And when I priced it, I knew that it was. I knew someone would want it, but I didn't know if they would sacrifice the money to buy it. Uh, lo and behold. I dropped the price, and the first day I dropped the price, the guy came running back. He said, "Yeah, I need to have it. I, I need that. I need that grandfather clock liquor cabin in my house." Um, very proud that I sold this piece. I knew that it was unique enough to sell. I knew that somebody would want it. I knew that it was created with enough thought and passion that somebody would understand when they saw it. Um, probably my most proud piece that I've sold. This next is an Egyptian chest. Uh, this Egyptian chest sold, uh, uh, it's next to me, a beautiful piece, really beautiful piece, uh, really well put together. Uh, I'm proud of this one because of the uniqueness of it and it's something that I know. You can't just buy at Ikea. I know that this is a, an art piece that's at, that's at a supreme level and that ain't the person who bought this, they are, um, they have very good taste is what I will say. Because this art piece um, stands out. It's, it, it's vibrant, you know what I mean? And the depth of the pictures and the way that I created it, um, it can't be denied, you know what I mean? So that they, they, they got a prize. I put this up for sale once again. The price that I thought was not the price that they bought it for. And that's the life of an artist. You know, you put up 500 You think, what's $500 for this beautiful art piece? He just sold a piece for $4 million. And then you realize that you're just some dude. So they're like, 500 I'll give you. And then they offer you 350 And then you got to decide, do I want this to sit in my garage for another year? Or do I want it to go and have a home? I'm always going to choose for my art to have a home. Because as my art exists in your home, so do I. So I sold that piece for less than what I initially wanted, but that's that's it, you know. The next art piece I sold is a beautiful table next to me. Um, with a, It's a Greek mythology table. Beautiful table. So happy that I was able to sell this. This is another art piece that I, I needed it to have a home. Like, in my bones, I was like, someone needs to have this as their computer desk. Like, this is too dope to just sit in the garage, you know. I made it and I immediately brought it. I immediately brought it to um, the gallery uh, to be shown to the public. And somebody bought it within about a month. I was extremely proud that I was able to sell this. I love this piece. I just, I wanted it. But I, but that's, that, and that's the mark for me sometimes. If I actually want to keep it legitimately, I know it's a good piece of furniture. 
uh, as much furniture as I see, as much furniture as I make. When I want something, I know that it's at a certain level or it's at the necessary level to be sold. The next art piece next to me is uh, an Audrey Hepburn table. Don't ask me why. But I love Audrey Hepburn's image. Uh, it's a certain type of beauty that we don't see as much of anymore. And we've kind of gotten away from it. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say I love all of her movies and I love, you know. But me being an artist, me being a creator, and me trying to get into a certain space of humanity. When I see people who operated at Audrey Hepburn's level, I identify with that. Her face is a symbol of grace and beauty and femininity and purity and the many different dimensions of being you know a high fashion female you know because there's layers to her character if you know anything about Audrey Hepburn there's layers to her character you know she grew up broken home she ended up helping people uh, a lot of people at towards the end of her life uh, so she didn't just stay an actress and stay in, in, in the spotlight for too long she eventually transitions to doing more. Um, I won't go on a rant, but yeah, I made this table uh, in dedication to her. Uh, and it sold. It, 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 this is the quickest I've ever sold an art piece. This art piece sold uh, the first day I put it out on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I was shocked. I sold it to one of my Army buddies. They saw it, came, picked it up. I didn't even have to deliver it. They came and picked it up. I was shocked. You know, paid me in cash. And yeah, that's what happened with that art piece. That's Audrey Hepburn. That's an Audrey Hepburn table. The next art piece is another one of my favorites. They're all my favorites, but this one, this one touches my soul because some things you make, I make furniture. So some things I make, okay, it's a table. Like no matter how artistic it may be to the general public, dude, you made a table. Like whoop de do, right? But then there's certain things I make that break beyond that where you're like, oh no, that's art. Like that is art. Like so this this is a next to me it's a mannequin head. Not a mannequin head, like a well, I don't know what you would call it. I don't think it's a mannequin head though, but it's in it's in the bird it's in a bird cage on a slab of wood. And it deserves its own video. So I can't really go into the depth of explanation right now because that would take an hour. But what I will say is that there's images on that piece of wood to commemorate all the black life lost um, on trees in America. And I'll leave the explanation at that. That piece sold to a gallery owner in Bolingbrook. His name is Ernest Brown. I knew he wanted the piece. I knew he was going to buy it. He never directly said, hey, I definitely want to buy it. But eventually he, he had it in the gallery so long. He looked at it so often. He said, you know what? I got to have this art piece. So I sold it to him for a decent price because he's done a lot of good things for me in my life. So I have no problem um, knowing that the art has a good home with a man like that. The next art piece right here is the is a, is a war on drugs art piece, a beautiful art piece that I sold to one of my good friends, Nick Hayes. Uh, lucky to have sold this art piece to my buddy Nick, uh, he paid me full price for it. Uh, he paid me full price, and that really spoke to me because most people, they want to, especially if they know you, they want you to pay you less. So I was lucky that he paid me full price for that, and he was lucky to receive such a beautiful art piece. As you can see, the Statue of Liberty, what I did was I cut out the Statue of Liberty, and inside I put a collage of the war on drugs, a lot of brutal images and other um graffiti and things that remind you of the 90s and the 80s and the culture back then mixed with Bill Clinton. Um, I focus on Ronald Reagan in some art pieces when I do war on drugs art, but for this one, I focus on Clinton because he's part of that uh, horrible American narrative as well. Um, and then the last art piece I'll talk about, I sold uh, these, these lamps. I had to send these lamps to Indiana. Uh, I had to send these lamps to Indiana. Another person on Facebook, they saw it and they liked it. Uh, my buddy, Brad Bader, very shocked that he bought some art from me. I was really taken back that he wanted this particular piece. But as an artist, I don't care. If you want it, it is everything's for sale. So I sent it to Indiana and I he told me he got it. And I was very proud that he got it. 
um, sold it for, I, also he bought that for full price. He didn't try to skim me out uh, or get it for the low. So with all this being said, I started making art about three years ago. And to think that I went from not selling anything to not even know, and not even knowing how to make anything really to now where I'm at, where I'm able to say I've sold six, seven art pieces in a year um, for a decent amount of, you know, money, uh, that feels better than dwelling on the shortcomings that I have experienced or the lack of recognition from institutions. Um, I exist in people's homes. People who do not know my face, some of them, not all of them, but some people who do not know my face wake up every morning or live in a house where they see my artwork. And that was always the goal, to be bigger than this physical form. So that's it. I just want to make a positive video. I just want to make a positive video highlighting the good things that have happened to me this year rather than dwelling on or being bitter or being negative uh, because that happens a lot. I would say it happens too much. So thank you for your time.